Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Arjun Chaudhary. Here are the top stories that are tracking for you on Thursday, the 25th of February. No fair hike as Indian government presents railway budget 2016. Pakistan begins final phase of military operation in North Waziristan. And NASA astronaut Sunita Williams visits India, encourages women to pursue their dreams. And now for all the details. Presenting the railway budget for the fiscal year 2016-17 to in Parliament, the Indian government announced a number of people-friendly initiatives, including new trains and modernization of systems. The new budget focused on passengers' comfort while boosting revenue. Indian railway budget for 2016-2017 spared passengers from any increase in tariffs while times. promising an ambitious modernization plan. We Presenting the Modi government's ways. second rail budget in, in the Indian Parliament, Parliament Railway Minister Suresh Prabhu the announced the introduction of three new superfast trains with modern facilities. We are starting three new products. Ham Safar, Tejas and Uday. I am announcing three telex services which to ensure cost recovery by way of tariff and non-tariff measures. Ham Safar would be fully air-conditioned third AC service with an optional service for meals. Tejas, on the other hand, will showcase the future of train travel in India, operating at a speed of 130 km per hour and above. It will offer onboard services such as entertainment, local cuisine, Wi-Fi, etc. The railway budget is also targeting revival of freight business that provides two-thirds of railway revenue. Prabhu announced the plan for creation of dedicated north-south, east-west and east-coast freight corridors by 2019. Indian Railway typically has focused on increasing revenues through tariff hikes. We want to change that and challenge our conventional thinking on freight policies to win back our share on the transportation sector. Prabhu also announced CCTV surveillance at all sections. Around 400 CCTV cameras would be installed in stations across the country. Railway is also set to introduce latest drone technology to monitor progress of projects. Wi-Fi services, which were provided to passengers in 100 stations last year, will be equipped in 400 stations over the next two years. The planned budget outlay for the world's fourth largest network is $17.6 billion, up about 20% from the current year's estimated expenditure. Moving on. Pakistan has begun the last phase of military operation in North Waziristan. North Waziristan, one of the seven semi-autonomous tribal areas on the Afghan border, had for years been a den of terrorist groups, including the Al-Qaeda and the tehreek e taliban Pakistan. Pakistan Army Chief General Raheel Sharif announced the commencement of the last phase of the ongoing military operation in North Waziristan on Wednesday. The offensive is aimed at eliminating the remnants of terrorists from their hideouts in the deeply forested ravines of the Shawal Valley and to end the near-decade-long Islamist insurgency. The Shawal Valley and the region of Datta Khel, which sits on the confluence of borders between North and South Waziristan, shares a border with Afghanistan, offering a safe transit for terrorists. The crackdown on terrorists called Operation Zarbeyaz was launched under US pressure in June 2014 following deadly attack on Karachi airport by Tehreek e Taliban or TTP militants. Months later, the TTB militants attacked an army-run school in Peshawar, killing 134 children as revenge to the operation. Operation Zarbeyaz has led to wide internal displacement of people. Thousands of people have been displaced from their homes due to the tussle between the Pakistan military and terrorists. In neighbouring Afghanistan, a group of Afghan Desh fighters who recently laid down their arms have claimed that the Pakistan's military have been sponsoring the terror group in the war-torn country. Pakistan's army is providing weapons and training the Daesh militants to fight against Afghan forces, stated a 10-member faction of the militant organization who laid down their arms on Wednesday. 
The group also claimed that they had received training by the military in Pakistan. The former Daesh fighters said that they used to provide daily reports to Pakistan's facilitators and were encouraged to fight the Afghan government and the forces. Ties between the two nations were earlier soured as Afghanistan had blamed neighboring Pakistan of sheltering militants on its soil. Moving on to news from Nepal. As the Nepal government ended its months-long rationing of petroleum products after supply from India improved, the ethnic Madhesi community has charged the government of discriminating against them. According to the minority community, the distribution of supplies is not being done evenly by the government. The ethnic Madhesi community claims that they are facing discrimination in the distribution of LPG cylinders despite the resumption of supplies from India. Members allege that most of LPG cylinders are being transported to the hilly region of the country, ignoring the demands of the people in the Terai Plains. Gas ka yaha jo hai, pura samasya ho gaya hai. Matlab pura bullet aa raha hai, itna bullet aa raha hai, uske baad ye sara pahar mein ja raha hai. Aur yaha milia nahi raha gas. Khale mujhe kala bazaari ho raha hai. The Nepal government on Tuesday had ended its five-month-long rationing and sales restrictions on petroleum products following the lift of crippling blockade at key border trade points in the landlocked country. However, people assert that the demand is much higher than supply. क्या है कि हम लोग को बहुत समस्या है क्या अभी निरंतर गैस नहीं आने से दिन को 40 टैंकर ही आ रहा है सरकार का भनाई अनुसार सरकार के कथन अनुसार 40 टैंकर आ रहा है यदि 60 टैंकर आ गया तो निरंतर समस्या समाधान हो जाएगा अब मांग अनुसार आपूर्ति नहीं होने से अभी बहुत दिक्कत The Madhesi community has been protesting against the new constitution for ignoring its interests but had called off their strike and blockade at the Indo-Nepal border last month the decision had brought relief to the Himalayan nation, which was severely short of fuel, medicine and other supplies in the wake of the blockade. Indian Kashmir throughout the ages has remained another name for paradise for its captivating beauty. The beautiful valley has also been home to a number of great saints and Sufis who have promoted the idea of living with peace and brotherhood. The idea, now a tradition, is being carried forward by Islamic scholars who make people aware about its importance. Islamic scholars from across the Kashmir Valley congregated to participate in a one-day conference by the name of Ethikath to teach and spread the true meaning of Islam. Various Islamic scholars and intellectuals deliberated upon various teaching, traditions and practices of Islam. جو اعتقاد کا بنیادی مقصد مقاصد ہے وہ یہ ہے کہ ایک دوسرے کو جوڑو آپس میں جوڑو اور ایک ایسے نظام کو وجود میں لیا جو جو ہم کہیں گے کہ یہ نظام کے لیے ہی کائنات بنی ہے وہ نظام ہے محبت کا نظام ایک دوسرے کے ساتھ بھائی چارے کا نظام ایک دوسرے کو نزدیک لانے کا نظام a large number of people present at the event hoped such conferences would be organized more often. I want to say that the generation of people who are young, the young people, who are young, they also participate in this and get to learn something. When I came here, I got a lot to learn something. Especially the big people who came here, 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 ہر قصبے ہر ڈسٹرک میں تحصیل وائز پہ یہ بھی پروگرامز ہو جائے اور لوگوں کو پتہ چلے کہ اسلام کیا سکھاتا ہے اور دین ہمارا کیا ہے اس میں جو درارے ہیں وہ دور ہو جائیں گے سکولرز بلیف سرٹن ایلیمنٹس فور دے ویسٹڈ انٹریسٹ ہیڈ ٹرائی ٹو شیکس پیپلز ٹرسٹ آن فیتھ یومینٹی اینڈ سوفی کلچر بٹ اٹ از لارجلی ڈیو ٹو سوفی سینس ہو ڈیولپ دا اسپرٹ آف برادر ہڈ امنگ پیپل آف آل فیتھس ان کشمیر that the region remains a land of diversity and harmony. The ongoing Taj Mahotsav in northern India is pulling hundreds of people from around the globe to the country's culture and tradition. The festival is one of the most awaited events of the year. <laughs> The city of Taj Mahal, Agra, is a treasure trove of India's rich cultural heritage. 
and to celebrate the grandeur of the city, a 10-day long event is organized every year. This year, the celebration was all the more special as artists from across the country came to celebrate the Silver Jubilee of the festival. Various poets gathered at the festival to recite poems, mesmerizing the audience. Bollywood singers like Mohit Chauhan also enthrall the crowds with power pack performance. is an amalgamation of art, culture, cuisine, dance and music of the city. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. No fair hike as Indian government presents Railway Budget 2016. Pakistan begins final phase of military operation in North Waziristan. And NASA astronaut Sunita Williams visits India, encourages women to pursue their dreams. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. We can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.